Well, good morning, everyone. And of course, this is the day the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Again, we are not moved by what we see. We're not moved by how we feel. We're only moved by what we believe. Praise God. And we believe this today, that God is who he says he is. God has what he says he has. And, and he will do what he says he will, he will do, whether or not you and I are presently experiencing it or not. Never lower God down to the level of your personal experience. Because God is the one that can change your experience. Praise God. Welcome, Mary. Welcome this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. So God is the one that, that, that can change your experience. You never bring God down to the level of your experience and say, you know, God is doing this in my life. Because God is able to do exceeding, abundantly, and above what you can ask or think. How? According to the power that's working inside of you. So we need to never lower God down to the level of our experience. And that's why, you know, we, we testify sometimes this is what God has done. And that's great. I mean, it's always good to give God thanks for the great things he's done. But you know what? God did it before we even saw it. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. I'm saying again, God did it before we saw it. Remember when Jesus, when Jesus Christ was risen from the dead? He appeared to some of the disciples. Praise God, Dr. Joe. Praise God. Uh, and Tamika, God bless you today. Remember, Frankie, welcome. Praise God. <laughs> Man. Remember when uh, we're talking about walking by faith and not by sight. We're talking about not believing it because you see it. But, but, but seeing it in the realm of the Spirit is believing. Amen. So remember when Jesus Christ appeared to his disciples and they told Thomas, we have seen him. And Thomas said, except I see, you know, the nail prints in his hands. I, and, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. Remember that? Well, what he was saying is that, that, that my faith is based upon uh, what I can see. But Jesus told him, Thomas, you believe me because you saw, but blessed are they that believe without seeing. So God is saying today, do not wait until you can see it to believe that you already have it. In other words, don't lower what God has done in your life to natural, physical uh, five sense knowledge evidence because God has done it and, it and it's when you believe that God has done it that it gets manifested in the physical realm that's how Mark eleven twenty four 24 said what things so if you desire when you pray believe that you receive them and you shall have them so that's why I said today is a great day praise God why because everything that you ask God for is done in Jesus name and it is in route glory to God to your house in Jesus' name. Amen. In physical manifestation in the name of Jesus. Well, welcome this morning, all of you, Antonio, Melva, all of you that are coming on, Montoya, everybody that's coming on this morning, God bless you. This is a great day. Praise God to see God do great things in our lives. Amen. Now, we're going to pick back up today where we've been on all week long, and we've been talking about you know God's wealth transfer. We've been talking about getting, getting a position for uh, to get God's wealth transferring our lives and praise God we said that it's important that timing is important you know uh, you know we said that if you if you if you're a quarterback and, and and the quarterback has a ball the ball in his hand he is running a play that has already been pre-designed before the, the play started and so it's up to the runner to be in position at the at, at the place that they already decided are uh, you farming that it would be and so the, the quarterback throws the ball to that position, and it's up to the quarter—I mean, to the running back—to get to that point. I mean, not running back, but the but the uh, uh, the receiver, the wide receiver, to get to that point. And that's what God is saying today: is we got to get positioned for the wealth that God has for our lives, Amen. Because the because the quarterback, Jesus Christ, glory to God, the Holy Ghost has already released the ball, and now it's up to us to get in position to receive it in Jesus' name, Amen. Now. Let's get into some things today. Uh, uh, we're talking about the glass wealth transfer. And we want to look at some things again today on those areas. About one of the things that's holding the body of Christ back. From receiving the wealth that God has. Is because sometimes. We're going to talk about this a little bit about past thinking. We got to get rid of negativity in our lives. So we got to get rid of negative people in our lives. But the thing is now, we got to give God permission to do what he wants to do in our lives. In other words, God cannot get it to us 
until he can first of all get it. I mean, God can't get it through us until he can first of all get it to us. Meaning, we got, he got to get it through our minds, through our words, through our actions. Amen? And one of the things you got to do is give God permission to get it. And let me, let me show what I'm talking about today. God wants to make the wealth transfer in all of our accounts. Amen? I'm, I'm going to show you in a few minutes. But if I, if you and I have an account at the bank, maybe it's Wells Fargo or whatever bank is in your area, and in, my, in your savings account, you got $30,000 in your savings account, but you have uh, $1,300 in your checking account. If you write a check out for $2,000 over and above what you have in your checking account, even though you have $30,000 in your savings account, do you know the bank will, will let that check bounce? Even though you have $30,000 in your savings account? Because they, because they said you've not given us permission to transfer that money in the event that you overwrite a check. But if you give the bank permission to uh, uh, an override permission that if you ever write a check, you got you got fifteen hundred dollars in your checking account, you write a check out for two thousand dollars, you get the permission to take the money out of the thirty thousand dollar savings account and immediately transfer it over. Once you get the permission to do that, then they have right of passage into your account. Are you following? So we're talking about today giving God permission. Because each one of us, each one of us right now that are partners, number one, with God, and we're givers, we're tithers, we're givers, but have you and I give God, given God permission? <laughs> Glory to God. In the event that your ability <clears throat> and my ability I, I, I does not exceed mm -hmm. the level of money I need transferred. But God's ability, God has enough in his account. If we give him the power <clears throat> or the right to transfer money, he has enough money in his account. That's right, bank over job, that's right. He has enough money in his account that if we give permission, he can transfer the money into our account. Glory to God. You said, Pastor, how does God make the transfer? Let's go to the book of Philippians, chapter number 4, and verse number 15. You have to first of all understand that you have, account, you have a bank account. You have an account both in the earth realm, and you have an account with God in the spiritual realm. Now, remember we said that power get wealth is God's ability added to your ability? It is God's account added to your account? <laughs> Glory to God. Philippians 4 and verse number 15, this is Paul talking to his partners. He says, now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, listen to this now, no church entered, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but you only. Now, let me read that out of the Amplified version of the Bible. It'll give us a little bit more clarity on that verse. He says in verse 15, Amplified, And you Philippians know also, I'm saying you Philippians <coughs> yourselves, <coughs> excuse me, and you Philippians yourselves well know that in the early days of the gospel ministry, when I left Macedonia, listen to this now, no church assembly entered in the partnership with me, entered into partnership with me, and opened up a debit and credit account in giving and receiving, except you only. In other words, you gave me the right to uh, 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 to have an account with you. You opened up a, 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 a receiving and giving account with me. Which now, I'm going to show you as we get into this, is going to connect you to God's account. Glory to God. And so he goes on down there in verse number 16. He says this. This is in the, in the, in the regular Bible, in the King James Bible. For even in Thessalonica, he says, you sent once and again to my necessity. Verse 17. 
not because I desired a gift. That was not my motive. He said, but I desire fruit. I desire fruit that may abound to your account. Oh, you get that today? Paul says that when you are in partnership concerning giving and receiving, <clears throat> and you're pulling it out of your account, he said you're building up your spiritual bank account. Money or, or, or substance get out that God now, when, when needed, can transfer into your account. He said you're building up an account in heaven. You're building up an account that God can use to transfer when you need $2,000 and you only have $1,500. You're building up an account in the spiritual realm that will give God the right to transfer that which you have in the spiritual realm that you're lacking into your bank account in Jesus' name. You're, he, said, I'm, he said, I'm desiring fruit to abound in your account, in your heavenly bank account. So that way, God's ability in your heavenly bank account attached to your natural ability in your bank account is going to cause, he's going to say here, look what he's going to say here in verse 19. Let's go down to verse 19. He said, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Listen this now. But my God, my God shall supply all your need. You need $2,000. You only have $1,500. But you have $30,000 in your heavenly bank account. So God's going to take from that heavenly bank account. And, and, and make sure that you have the extra $500 to take care of the $2,000 need. But he said he's going to supply it according to his riches and glory in your heavenly bank account. You get that today? So, so you and I then, God has said that when we, when we give and we turn our account over to God and, and, and begin to build up our spiritual bank account, God's account on our behalf, then when you and I have a lack in our natural need, we need fifty we need two thousand dollars, but we have five, we have fifteen hundred dollars, he said God gonna take care of the other you had, but you now need another five hundred dollars. God's gonna go into your spiritual bank account that you've been building up through your partnership and take that money out of your spiritual bank account and make sure you have the full $2,000 that you need. That's transfer. That's how God does transfer. Amen. Now, what's been happening is many Christians' bank accounts are spiritually bankrupt because they're not in partnership. Then are you following in those areas? And so they're not laying up anything in their partnership. Are you, now, now, this right here was not tithing. Now, tithing has an account too. Remember God says in the book of Malachi, when you bring your tithe into the storehouse, I will open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. So that, that, that's an account that in heaven also through tithing. I'll open the windows of heaven, of heaven in the spiritual realm. I'll pour you out a blessing. Now, room enough to receive it all. That's an account that you build it up through tithing. Amen. And then here in, 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 in Philippians, you build it up through partnership. Partnering with the apostle. Partnering with you know, uh, whoever, your part, whoever God leads you to partner with, you're building up through partnership now. And God takes care of the need that you have through your partnership giving. You follow me? Because you're building up a account through your giving, through your partnership. And you now have a right to say, my God shall supply all my need. I have $1,500. I need $2,000. God's going to take the 500 out of my spiritual bank account and transfer it into my natural bank account to make it popular. Now he's going to cause, he's going to make some transfers. Are you following me? Now let me show you what I'm talking about here. Is it scriptural then where God literally takes from the wicked? We talked about yesterday. The wicked now has your finances. We said that yesterday. The Bible said the wealth of the wicked is later for the just. So, the, so God's going to take money from the wicked 
the wealth from the wicked, from a sinner that's been laid up for the just and transfer that money into your account. The $500 that you need is in the hands of the wicked. And God says he called in the wicked to heap it up. Listen to my thing. Listen to my word from yesterday. You'll get hold to this. He called in the wicked to heap it up. He said, but he's going to call. He's going to give it to those that are walking right before him. A wealth transfer. Is this something that is biblical? Do we have any word things in the Bible where this is validated? Let's go to the book of Genesis, number one, chapter, chapter 12, and verse number one. And then look through some scriptures today and let's validate this thing through the word of God. Because sometimes you can have different people that may preach against this. I don't believe in all that. That wealth transfer. Well, don't go by what people say, I don't believe. Go by what the Word of God says. Because because you have people sometimes that's preaching things. You have some preachers that are preaching against this. And then they'll turn around and ask you for an offering. That don't make no sense, does it? What, what, what are you going to give when you, when you get your offering? You know, uh, how about connecting your offering, connecting your, uh, your seed to your bank account? Just have a bank account. How about connecting it to tithing to the windows of heaven opening up to you? How about connecting to par par connecting partnership to all your needs getting met? Are you following me? Instead of you know, so don't, don't listen to preachers that's preaching against this. Look in the Bible for yourself. Don't say Dr. Craig said, my word has no power. Say this what the Bible says. And learn to build your faith. Not on the word of a man or a woman. Build your faith on God's word. Faith comes by hearing, but hearing by the word of God. So you get a good word foundation in this area. That way you can't be you you, you can't be brainwashed by these other people. That just you know they don't have they don't have the Bible open. They just they're preaching. They just, they're preaching. And uh, no, make people open the Bible. Make people give you the word on things. Don't let people interpret the Bible for you and don't have you open the Bible for yourself. I can make the Bible say whatever I want to say. Are you following me? Amen. Praise God. You know, like one man said, uh, uh, um, uh, he said that um, uh, I believe the Bible. Yes, I believe the Bible. And uh, I said that, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, the Bible says, the Bible says Judas went out and hung himself. And so, and then another scripture says, go and do thou likewise. Well, those two they even talking about that. But if you just listen to the, the preacher priest that, yeah, that means that it's scripture, it's scripture to, to go commit suicide because Judas committed suicide. No, 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 no. That, you know, you can't, they connect the wrong scriptures in the wrong way. But I'm telling you something, listen to the word of God, read the word of God for yourself. Amen. Now, Genesis chapter 12 and verse number one says, now the Lord has said unto Abraham, listen now, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you will be a blessing. Verse 3. And I will bless them that bless thee. And curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Let's read on down there a little bit. Verse 9. Go down to verse 9. And Abraham then journeyed, going still unto the south. Verse 10. And there was a famine in the land. And Abraham went down into Egypt to sojourn there. For the famine was grievous in the land. So God, Abraham has now gone into the land of the wicked, of the ungodly. But the blessing is on him. He just got, God just told him in, in verse 1 through 3, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make your name great. You're going to be a blessing. And people are going to bless themselves by blessing you. Well, let's go on up here. Let's see what happened. Uh, 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 when Abraham went there. Because during that time, if you, if you read the rest of that, that chapter there, you'll find that Abraham went down there and, and he, he, got, he got scared, <laughs> afraid. And uh, told the, the, the Pharaoh uh, that, that Sarah was his wife. I mean, it was his, was his uh, 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 sister. And uh, through that, the, uh, the man took Sarah and uh, was getting ready to marry her and have a relationship with her. And God came to him, James, don't touch that woman. And then Pharaoh said, man, what have you know, done to me? And, and Pharaoh said, Abraham, get out of here. Take all the, you know, your, your children, everything you got, and get out of here. And let me show you 
even though there was a famine in that land, God can call you to come up out of that famine rich. Listen to this now. Genesis chapter number 13 and verse number 1. Listen to this. Very important. Chapter 13 verse number 1. And Abraham went up out of Egypt, the, the land of the wicked. Listen now. He and his wife and all that he had and lot with him into the south. Verse 2. And Abraham was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. Now, remember, he went into Egypt. There was a grievous famine in that land. So how then did Abraham come up out of there rich? Not just rich, very rich. If you read all of chapter 12, I mean, uh, verse, uh, 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 chapter 12, verse, you know, the rest of that chapter, you will see that, he, that God calls Pharaoh and took the money from the wicked and transferred it into Abraham's hand. And even though during a time of famine, Abraham came up out of Egypt, out of that secular environment, very rich in silver and gold and in cattle. I can say this to you and I today, that many people, uh, many of you, you including myself in many situations, in the last years through that recession like that, you know, people went through a lot of challenges in that, in that famine. But can I say to you right now, to those that allow God and give permission to make the wealth transfer, you're coming up out of this thing very rich in silver and in gold. Because according to the scriptures, you and I are blessed, according to the uh, book of Galatians, you and I are blessed with faith from Abraham. And, and we are the, we, because we belong to Christ, we are heirs according to the promise. How do, can you see that? We're heirs of God. We're heirs of Abraham. We're blessed with, by, with faithful Abraham. Uh, Galatians 3, 7 and verse 9, verse 7 and also verse 9 and also 29 and 30 in those areas. I'm telling you, you and I are the seed of Abraham. And the blessing that was on Abraham is on you and I because we're Abraham's seed. If you be Christ, the Bible says, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the mm -hmm. promise. Mm -hmm. And you can see that when the blessing of Abraham is on you and I, hallelujah, when that blessing is on us, even during famine, God's going to make the wealth transfer and we're going to come out very rich. I'm declaring 2020 is a season of coming out very rich in silver and in gold in the name of Jesus for those who give God the right to make the transfer out of, out of your heavenly bank account through your seed into your natural bank account and every need will be supplied in the name of Jesus. This year, I'm declaring a year of no lack, a year of no need in the name of Jesus. Well, let's see if we can find some more scriptures in that area. Uh, let's go to Genesis now, chapter number 15. Let's see if this is valid throughout the Bible. Because let me tell you something. When we teach this thing, we shouldn't just teach it from one isolated scripture. If what we're teaching is a biblical principle, it should be illustrated throughout the Bible. You follow me? If we're saying that God's making a wealth transfer, we should be able to see where it's illustrated throughout the scriptures. So let's notice in Genesis chapter 15 now, and verse number 13. It says here, uh, look what God promises the children of Israel. And, and it says, and God, and God said to Abraham, Know of a surety that thy seed, thy seed, we're Abraham's seed, thy seed shall be a stranger in, the, in a land that is not theirs, and, 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 and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them for 400 years. But verse 14, also, and also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, the secular world. Afterwards, the seed of God. Afterwards, they shall come out with great substance. Glory to God. I'm declaring right now that the, that the, the, the church has been under, under subservience to the world. Has been known as just this charity organization. If you got some rummage, give it to the church. Do, they got bake sales, buy, buy a pie from them to help support the church. But I'm telling you now, no more serving the world. No more being the subservient to the world system. 
But God says it's time now to come out with great substance. And I'm telling you right now, you're going to see those that give God the right to transfer. It's coming out of this bake sale, chicken dinner, car wash mentality. And they're coming into great substance in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. I declare as an apostle of God. I declare based on the word of God. You're coming out this year with great substance, praise God. No more lack. No more needs. Your need going to be swallowed up in the, the substance that God's going to bring into your life. And every need will be met in Jesus' name. Now let's go to the book of Exodus, chapter number 12. And again, let's see what God's going to do. God, see, God promised them, didn't he? I'm going to bring them a great substance. Is that right? So let's see if we can see uh, this happening. How does God do that? Exodus chapter 12 and verse 35. It says, And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses, and they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and jewels of raiment. Oh my God. Verse 36. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they lent unto them such things as they required and they spoiled the Egyptians. Now, how are you going to do that? Now, you've been a slave all this time and now you're on your way out and you're borrowing from somebody that they know you're going to pay them back because you get ready to leave out of Egypt. But yet the Bible said God gave them favor inside of Egypt and everything they required because of the favor that was on their life Bible said they spoiled the Egyptians. Isn't it amazing that even though people hate you, God going to cause your haters to give to you in the name of Jesus. Isn't that beautiful? How do, now, now, you know, that, that's, not, that was, that's not a natural thing. Now, there's no way them Egyptians would automatically give them people that. So we're going to borrow it. They, are, they hated them. But yet, because of the favor of God that was in their life, even their haters knew there was something on their lives. And God gave them favor. And, and they borrowed so I'm telling you right now that you and I can begin to require the money that belongs to us, the houses that belong to us, the lands that belong to us, the, the finances that belong to us, the happy marriages that belong to us, the good family belong to us, all your children saved, and you'll just see that the righteous shall be blessed. You can begin to require, hallelujah, those things in your life. And they will manifest in the name of Jesus because God has already given you favor. The favor of God is on your life. Glory to God. You have favor. You have limited. You have favor for your faith. You have favor for your finances. And you have favor for your family. Favor for faith, family, and finances in Jesus' name is declared on your life according to the word of God. Amen. Praise God. Now, let's see if it happens. Uh, let's look at the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms now, chapter number 105 and verse 37. Psalms 105 verse 37 says this, And he brought them forth also with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among them. Can you see that? See, you know what God says? You might have been in the world system. You might have been in the, the spirit of poverty in your life and lack and insufficiency. He said, but when you give me the right to transfer, when you give me the right to put my favor on your life and my blessing on your life, he said, I'm going to bring you out with silver and gold. I'm declaring you're going to be, you coming out this year, out of 2000, you coming out of 2019, you coming out of 2008, trans, uh, you coming out of 2008 recession, and you're coming, you're going into 2020, according to the word of God, with silver and gold in Jesus' name. Money will come to you in abundance. Favor will come to you in abundance based on the word of a living God. Amen. So we can see that Abraham got a hold to this. We can see that Isaac in the, in, uh, in, in the scripture talk about Isaac, it was a feminine land and Isaac sowed a seed. That was I think Genesis chapter 26 verse number 12 and 13 where it said that Isaac sowed a seed in that land in a time of famine. And in the same year, it said he got a hundredfold return. We can see that Jacob, when Laban stole from him, but that favor was on his life because he was a tithe. The Bible said he had committed himself to the tithe. And we see that the Bible said that, Jacob, that, that God took all of Laban's wealth and transferred it into the hands of Jacob. Praise God. I'm telling you, that's what God is saying today. It worked for Abraham. 
it worked for Isaac, hallelujah, it worked for Jacob, and it also worked for Joseph. Joseph in the land of Egypt, through one word that God gave him, amen, and one day transferred him from the pit to prison into the palace, and one day he became prime minister of all of Egypt because of the word and the grace and the favor and the blessing of God that was on his life. That's what's on you this day. You're the same, you're that same seed of Abraham. And you're coming out this year with the favor of God and the blessing of God on your life, on your ministry, on your family. And we can, we we'll have to back up no more in Jesus' name. We're going to do righteous, amen, our, 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 our self-revival, the violent now is taking it by force. Everything that belongs to you is, is returned in the name of Jesus. You got that today? Praise God. So, uh, that's what I have for today because you know, I'm giving you so much each day but I want to give you some illustrations today that God Almighty is, is, is wanting you to not just see yourself paying tithes no more but you're putting but you're, you're giving every time you're tithing you're giving God the right to transfer money into your spiritual bank account he said when you tithe I will open the windows of heaven I will pour you out a blessing you will not have room to receive it all that money, all that right there is being transferred into your bank account. Uh, you have the right of court. We said in the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse number uh, 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 15 through 19, where it says that God would transfer money into your account. Paul says that when I began in Macedonia, no church entered into partnership with me except you only through giving and receiving. He said, because of that, he said, he said not because I'm desiring a gift, but I'm desiring as you're partnering with me, fruit. To, it's going to bound to your account and to your heavenly bank account. He said, and through that, in the event that you need you need two thousand dollars and all you have are fifteen hundred dollars, God's going to take the five hundred dollars of your that, that 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 is acquired out of your spiritual bank account. We said we talked to you about about that in Philippians chapter four, verse fifteen through I think it's verse seventeen and eighteen. I think it is. He, God's going to take them the, your faith that you have through your seed that you sown. And, and, and make up that $500 because you give them the right to transfer. We said earlier that if you, if you, if you, uh, if you, if you have the bank and you don't have that money in your, in your other account, even though you have it, you've not given God the right to transfer it, then you can, you can, you can have $1,500 in your bank account, but $3,000 in your, in your savings account, and, and the bank will let that check bounce if you've not t given them the overdraft protection and the right to transfer money out of your other account. When you partner with an apostle, or when you're tithing, you're giving God the right of transfer. And, you, and that money, you're saying, God, now I'm sowing this seed because this is now adding fruit to my account. That way when I need the extra, your power, your ability there will be added to my ability and make up the $500 slack that I'm, I'm lacking. And Philippians 4.19, Paul goes to tell me, look, because of that, my God, my God, based upon your heavenly bank account that has been built through sowing seed and partnership, will supply all your need according to your, his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And I'm declaring that over your life this, this week, because many of you have been partnered with me, and I really appreciate your partnership with me. Uh, uh, again, uh, 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 your partnership it's with an apostle according to Philippians 4.19. Uh, but when you, when you give your tithe to your church, you give that tithe, you sow that tithe, tithe praise God. But uh, when you partner with me this week, I'm thanking God for you. Uh, uh, my book, I don't have it with me right now, but my book, let me get my book right quick. This is, this is a book that I wrote years ago when I was learning a lot of this. And God had me put this, put this book into print. It's called The Prosperity Factor. And you need to get this book as part of Any of you that parted with me for at least $25 or more, uh, uh, sowing a seed, I will send you this book. And, uh, and this book it contains a lot in there. I mean, I teach about pros the prosperity factor, how to prosper. I got a lot of confessions in this book, praise God, that I wrote that you can confess every day. I tell you what, this book, I guarantee you, would be worth way more than $25. Because the thing, the confessions I have in here is worth more than that. And the knowledge I give you in here will be a blessing to your life. Amen. So I want you to order this book today. All you got to do is 
there at the top you will see where you can you can sell the twenty five dollars or more into as into my cash app or you there's a link right there you can also sew it that's my my mission school app this where you can sew it says offering or book there and and it'll 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 let me know that you give it and then I'll contact you and I'll get your address and things like that and we'll get the book set right out to you immediately and but I'm telling you, this book will be a blessing to your life this is for all of you that part of it part of it be for at least twenty five dollars or more I send it to you, praise God. But you said, Pastor, I don't want the book, but I want to partner with you. Just go ahead and do that. The, uh, you can see the book on Facebook. I got a little picture over there right there on Facebook. Click that link right now, praise God, and let's, let's partner together so that all your needs are being met in Jesus' name. Well, I pray this has been a blessed week for you. I've enjoyed bringing the word of God to you. Amen. Uh, 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 I'm in Las Vegas. I'm here with an assignment from God, praise God. We're going to be establishing uh, a, a international uh, training center where I can continue to train you and develop you both on Facebook but also um, I got two ministry schools I have a ministry training institute that that'll, that'll, that'll train you in the things of God and the word of God you can sign up for and you can let me know if you want to, you're interested in that I also have a, a, an advanced leadership class and then also I'm mentoring I'm mentoring pastors now too uh, and individuals where you know where you want you ask me to be a, your mentor and I can let you know about that also, where you know we mentor you at, on, on a, a, as a church, as a ministry, or as a business, and we help you establish goals in your life. They will work with you throughout this next year to help you reach those goals and make sure that you do it. So, if you'd like to be, be mentored by me as an apostle, I got 45 years of experience. I was a, I was a hairdresser for 20, 20 years, pastor for 42 years, and I believe that my experience can be a blessing to your life. For, as far as mentorship and things like that, and even what the world called coaching, but really it's just me serving God and helping you reach your goals. So if, that, if you're interested in that, uh, message me on that. I'll, I'll let you know how you, can, how, how you can be a part of my ministry school or my advanced leadership class or my mentoring that I do also both on a personal level or on a ministry level. As pa I mentor as a pastor, praise God, or whatever your call is, I want to be a part of your life. We're partnering together to fulfill God's call in Jesus' name. So we love you very much. And uh, uh, we'll be back again on Monday at the same time. I'll uh, have, have you know, 6.30 Las Vegas time. How that is adjusted both in Phoenix and then around the world as you're listening to me. The same time every morning uh, for 30 minutes. So until then, until Monday morning, it's been a great blessing. I receive your partnership. I declare God's favor and blessing and increase on your life. And until tomorrow, this is Apostle Alfred Craig saying, May God's riches and His very best be yours. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye now.